previous class we discussed <coughs> phase detectors that work at uh, half rate. Now, uh, there are also quarter rate and one eighth rate phase detectors. Again, the motivation is the same to reduce the frequency of the clock that has to be distributed. So, motivation for using uh, half rate phase detector is to reduce the frequency of the clock that has to be distributed and you can take it further you can have quarter rate and maybe even one eighth of the rate and so on. Okay. So, I would not go into the details of that, but I am just telling you that these things exist. So, if you do see some paper you may see some quarter rate implementations uh, for something. Okay. Now, we discussed VCOs to some extent not at the circuit level, but uh, just to see what the nature of phase noise is. Okay. Now, like I uh, showed if you imagine a delay line with an inversion and then you place this in a feedback loop. This is with inversion. Then you place this in a feedback loop, you will have an oscillator of period 2 T d or frequency 1 over 2 T d. Okay. Now, looking at the noise of this that is if you have an edge at the input, the timing of the output edge will be changed because of noise. If you look at it that way, it is very easy to imagine how the variance of phase noise behaves in time domain right it grows with time linearly with time that's very easy to see this is the sigma of the absolute jitter and it grows with time okay now there is also another model that is used to describe phase noise i won't go into that now so, that is to say that we have L c with some loss, this is a lossy L c tank and this is compensated by a negative resistance minus R p okay. and this can sustain a sinusoidal amplitudes with a, a sinusoidal waveforms with a constant amplitude and you can also do some analysis. You can assume that the noise of uh, plus r p and minus r p are the same. Uh, the noise of r p is a current source of value 4 k t divided by r p. The noise of the negative resistance we can assume is similar. It is also white noise. It is 4 k t times some gamma which represents the excess noise factor divided by R p okay, that gamma depends on implementation. Now, this model it turns out it is easier to visualize what happens in the frequency domain okay, because now this R p cancels off minus R p and you have an ideal resonator L c okay, whose impedance goes to infinity at uh, the resonance frequency. Okay. So, if you use this and make some approximations you can calculate that the noise of this looks like that. If this is F naught, right? you have this current sources going into a parallel L c tank. Parallel L c tank has infinite impedance at uh, the resonance frequency. So, the noise spectral density looks like this okay? and you can make some further approximations and uh, uh, say that half of the noise is in phase noise, the other half is in amplitude noise and so on. So, the phase noise spectrum looks like this. Okay? this is this gives you basically the phase noise spectrum. This calculation is not valid. This is the spectrum. This calculation is not valid at F naught or very close to F naught. It is valid only when you go far away from F naught and from this you can calculate 
you can uh, imagine that this s phi is basically 1 over f square. Now, we calculated that using this itself right. We from the cumulative nature we saw that if uh, this delay line has white noise then the oscillator will have 1 over f square phase noise. The same thing can be got from the L c model also I would not go into that, but you will get that. Okay. <coughs> so, these two are sort of dual descriptions and of course, these two also are also like very popular ways of uh, making oscillators. Okay. Now, this it turns out this is actually a real oscillator this is fictitious you would not have a linear L c and r compensated by a linear negative r. In reality whatever negative thing you compensate it with it will have a highly nonlinear characteristic it will look more like a current switch okay. and it turns out that if you do calculations with that you will get results very close to this. So, uh, this model for preliminary explanations is okay, right. at least from this you can see that the spectrum of the voltage here across the tank right will have some shape like this right in this model and this model itself is not valid very close to f naught because I mean you cannot have infinite power right we know that the oscillation will have finite power. So, but uh, that will at least tell you that you will have these uh, uh, the spectrum will have the skirts which go to uh, lower values as you move away from the resonance frequency is this is okay. We know that uh, this is of the form a by f square and when you express this as s phi of f the phase noise spectrum this is the double sided spectral density and one side of that is what you consider as phase noise L of f. Okay. I mean this is just convention, but when you see uh, phase noise of some oscillator that is given it is L of f that is given and basically the practical consequence is that to calculate jitter you have to double this L and then integrate it from 0 to infinity. Okay. and there are some of those calculations in this assignment that you are doing right now. Okay. And we also saw that uh, <coughs> the spectrum of the oscillator itself okay, this is not the uh, phase noise spectrum the spectrum of the oscillator this is an approximation the actual thing looks like this where the area is the power in the oscillator. Okay. So, if you have an oscillation of amplitude uh, V p we know that this will be V p square by 2 the mean square value what is the spectrum what is here So, basically integral of S v of f from minus infinity to infinity okay, this we assume is one sided uh, this is from minus infinity to infinity this is equal to V p square by 2 right. So, what should be the scaling factor here 2 pi f w yeah. So, basically this uh, is it 2 pi f w uh, yeah. So, the integral of this will give you pi times f w and that cancels out. So, I will get V p square by 2 okay. and this is uh, all this we have done before. So, for f minus f naught much more than f w this becomes V p square by 2 
2 pi f w by f minus f naught square all right. Okay. And we also know from uh, this L of f that this should be also equal to v p square by 2 a by f minus f naught square. So, you get the relationship between this a and f w. Okay. A is basically f w divided by pi. This is okay. And what is this FW? FW is basically uh, relates the width of this line. If this value is something, the peak value, half of that will occur at plus minus FW, right? F naught plus minus FW. So, if you call this part the width of the line, the width of the line at pure oscillator should be 0. So, the smaller the FW, the better it is. Okay. And similarly, if you look at this, the smaller the value of A, the better it is. And A and FW are just proportional to each other. Okay, this is fine. So this, all this uh, we saw. Now, how do we actually make oscillators? Again, I won't go into detailed circuit design because the topologies are quite simple. You can uh, simulate them and then simulate the phase noise and see that will come in one of the future assignments. So, mainly especially when uh, we are making oscillators for serial links, we use ring oscillators or L C oscillators. Okay. Now, there are also other class of oscillators like relaxation oscillators, which depend on some current source charging a capacitor and the direction of the current source is reversed from time to time to give you a periodic waveform. These oscillators typically you cannot make them at very high frequencies and their phase noise performance is quite poor, even poorer than ring oscillators. So, we do not use them. So, these are the, the ring oscillators and LC oscillators are the ones which uh, go to sufficiently high frequencies and uh, have acceptable phase noise. Among them, uh, ring oscillators have poorer phase noise, but the advantage is that they do not have uh, passive inductors. So, they can be made very compact, whereas LC oscillators have very good phase noise but uh, they occupy a large area and they are not widely tunable. I think we discussed this, discussed these things before. But the disadvantages poor phase noise. And in general, you make them by having an odd number of inverters, at least if it is a single ended oscillator, this is how you make them, and you can have 5 also, I mean, any number is fine. And each of these stages can be in uh, different ways. One is, of course, just a CMOS inverter. Okay. Now, in this case, the delay of this can be controlled by VDD. Okay. So, uh, you change the supply voltage in order to change the oscillation frequency. Okay. As you increase the supply voltage, the oscillation frequency increases. An alternative to this is not to vary the supply voltage and sometimes this other thing has better control. So, what you do is you have the inverter structure, but you do not connect it to the supplies. Okay. I mean, in this case you can see the current that can be driven from the inverter is uh, can be large, large meaning the, be the highest current that can be pushed out is basically if this voltage is 0, 
the PMOS transistor has a source gate voltage of VED okay, and that is the maximum current. Similarly, maximum current can that can be pulled in is if this uh, the input is at VDD, then the gate source voltage of the NMOS is at is also VDD and it can pull some amount of current. Okay. So, that gives you the maximum currents uh, from this it is basically limited by the supply voltage. Now, in this other topology what you do is you deliberately try to make try to limit that current. Okay. So, you make something like current sources of course, these would not always remain in saturation. This is the supply voltage and you have these current mirrors. Okay. If all these transistors are in saturation, then the current through them will be this I control right, because of just the current mirroring action. Now, what does that mean? Basically, the here this is limited by V D D. I mean these things you know, I think you already made the delay line using this type of uh, structures, right. Whereas here it is limited by this uh, current control, okay. So, then this is the control in this case it is a current instead of V control you have I control, but that is okay. that is a small that is a minor uh, uh, variation okay. and this structure is known as the current starved inverter. Okay. So, basically what happens is the maximum current that can be pushed out here is I control right and similarly maximum current that can be pulled in is I control that is when all these transistors are in saturation region this current mirror pushes a certain amount of current and that is what can be used to charge the capacitance. So, if you lower I control you will have smaller current to charge the capacitance and you will have uh, uh, you will have a smaller current to charge the capacitance and you will have a lower frequency. Okay. So, in this case we have a control current. Okay. And when you make ring oscillators using this essentially the picture could be drawn like this I will draw a normal inverter which just consists of two transistors and we have these PMOS current sources on top. and NMOS current sources on the bottom and we have the same uh, structure as before some current mirrors to do the current mirroring and we have the ring oscillator blue. Okay. So, basically in this case the current in each inverter is limited to this I control. Okay. is fine and then there is a variant of this in which these nodes are connected together. In this case basically the total current consumed by the three inverters is limited to three times I control that is all. So, they give you slightly different performances and I think the one in which uh, all of them are tied together is little more preferred.
it is also a current starting oscillator. Any questions about this? Yeah, I think somehow uh, this gives slightly better performance. I have to look up exactly what it is, but uh, uh, because now it is the total current that is limited, I think this gives you a better uh, performance. I will see what the advantages are, what the exact advantages are and get back to you. Now, sometimes you want oscillators which uh, these are all single ended oscillators right. Every oscillator that I drew now is a single ended oscillator. I assume you have gone through single ended and differential circuits in uh, analog IC design. So, that means that this gives you one waveform with respect to ground uh, which is the oscillation waveform. Okay. Sometimes you want a differential oscillator. So, that means that instead of uh, the only having one waveform with respect to ground, you want to have two waveforms which are uh, opposite in phase and equal in magnitude. Okay. And there uh, you can do that, you can basically have a similar structure. I will show this as a differential inverter. What this means is that this is if this is V i p, V i m, this is V o p, V o m. If you plot V o p minus V o m versus V i p minus V i m, you should have some inverting characteristic. <coughs> okay, that's the idea, right? That is, if V i p minus V m is large, V o p minus V o m will be small, and vice versa. That's what an inverter is. Now, with this you can make oscillators, I will show how to make this uh, a little while later. Now, you can do exactly what we did earlier, let us say we put uh, we put three of these together. And then we connect it up like that. Okay. But because you have a fully differential structure, you are not restricted to an odd uh, number of stages. You can also have an even number of stages, which you cannot do with a single ended inverter, right? Because an oscillator it should have DC negative feedback. Okay, so, that the operating point is stabilized and it should have uh, essentially effectively positive feedback at some frequency where it oscillates. Okay. Now, with single ended inverters if you have an even number of inverters you will have DC positive feedback and it will latch up. Okay. I mean if you imagine doing this what would happen if you do this? So, these two will be could be at V D D and these two could be at ground and it stays there forever right. So, this will latch up, but with fully differential stuff though this is not the case you can have it All you have to do is to make this cross connection so that you have DC negative feedback. Okay. Now the advantage is, for instance, I mean, you have some waveform here. What will be the uh, phase relationship between these waveforms? Yeah, actually, so if you if this waveform is at uh, zero degrees, okay this waveform here will be at 180 degrees right. 
So, these waveforms will be 45 degrees apart. Okay. So, you will get like many different phases from a single uh, oscillator. You could also try this with two stages that gives you 90 degrees, but a two stage oscillator may or may not oscillate. Okay. You know that if you have a second order uh, system in negative feedback, it is uh, not unstable, right? I mean, it is uh, unconditionally stable. If you have some excess phase shift because of some reason, it could become unstable. But if you can get a two stage oscillator to oscillate, you will get uh, 90 degrees apart. Similarly, these things, right? <coughs> I mean, this is inversion. So, if I call this 0 degrees, right, this, uh, this and this, this will also be, of course, 0 degrees. So, this will be how much? What angle will this be at? 240 or minus 120 degrees, right? Okay. Or is it minus 240? Yeah, it is at minus 240 degrees, I think. And then uh, because it is inverted, that is uh, minus 180, and then it is delayed a little further. So, it is minus 240, and this will be at minus 120 degrees and this will be again at 0 degrees. So, with uh, 3 stages you get these 3 waveforms. Okay. Uh, whereas, with 4 stages and fully differential you can get 45 degree uh, waveforms which are 45 degrees apart. Okay. Now, having multiple phases right in the oscillator also helps you because as we said one of the ways of making clock and data recovery circuit is to have a multi phase generator and pick the right phase. Okay. In fact, that uh, is probably the most intuitive way of thinking about it. Right? You have the data and clock with some uncertain phase. So, you try all phases and pick the best one that is basically what it is that is what the especially the digital CDR conforms through that picture. Right? So, let me Let me uh, slightly redraw this. So, I have drawn it uh, upside down compared to the previous one, right? The both the inverted ones are like this. Okay, and I take four of these together. Okay, and I do this so that there is DC negative feedback. Let me say that the waveform here that is the reference that is at 0 degrees and that is exactly the same as this waveform. right? So, if I measure it like this what will be the phase? I mean here it is 0 degrees. So, what is the phase of uh, this waveform? If I call this let us say V A minus V A minus V B what is the phase of that waveform? Huh? What is it? I mean, don't go through the inverter chain. I mean, this is zero degrees, right? This minus this, the up minus down, the upper one minus the lower one. So, what is this? 180 degrees. It's just cross connected, right? So, 180 degrees. Now, each of these has identical delays, right? The way I have written it, there is no uh, intentional phase inversion between these waveforms. Okay. Let me if you ignore the delay of this inver inverter delay of this amplifier V 2 p minus V 2 m is in the same phase as V 1 p minus V 1 m right the DC gain wise they are all in the same phase, but they do have delays and they have equal delays. Okay. So, after going through 4 equal delays you have a phase shift of 180 degrees. So, what is the phase shift due to each one? 45 degrees. So, this is 
45 degrees. When I say 45 degrees, I mean that this waveform V 2 P minus V 2 M lags V 1 P minus V 1 M by 45 degrees. If I draw it in the sense of uh, phasors, it should be minus 45, minus 90, minus 135, minus 180 and then this cross connection gives you a full cycle uh, delay right? when it comes back. Is it okay? Yeah. No, no that is what. So, remember here this is the positive input negative input, this is the positive output negative output. So, with this polarity there is no inversion it is just an amplifier. So, that is why I said I have drawn this upside down compared to the picture here. I mean this also could be done, but I mean it would be slightly more confusing everywhere you have 180 degrees RAD stuff that is okay. Now, how do we make this differential stuff? Uh, one of the ways is to just use a differential amplifier. And there will be some capacitance here, let us assume that this is the only capacitance. So, that determines the delay right, the R and C together determine the delay okay. <coughs> and you want the if these transistors have certain G m at the operating point, you want G m R to be large okay. and delay of the stage is proportional to R C. Okay. So, you can do this. What is the problem with this? One is headroom. Huh? No, there will be gain. I mean inverter also has a gain. It has to have gain right. So, you want gain. It will have gain and then it will saturate. It will limit some value. So, one is of course, headroom. So, this will have smaller swings than uh, an inverter, uh, an inverter based oscillator right. The output waveform will go from 0 to V d d, whereas here it will be a small fraction of V d d. That is why actually this is not uh, favored as much as uh, uh, ring oscillators now. Now that uh, supply voltage has come down to 1 volt right, you do not have, uh, you will have probably 200 milli volts of swing from this. So, that may, but the, the problem with low swing it is good in some ways, but the bad thing is like uh, you will be clocking some flip flop with this that becomes harder right, because essentially what is the clock supposed to do in a flip flop, it is supposed to change the state of the flip flop right. The smaller the swing of the clock, uh, the harder it is to make the flip flop okay. If you have very wide swing, it is very easy to change it from uh, the sampling mode to the latching mode right. But uh, what is I mean we wanted a uh, we want to use this for uh, CDR circuit. So, what kind of an oscillator will we need? I mean, we have to tune the frequency, right? How do you tune it here? Huh? Ah, why will it change the frequency? I mean, you will have to do that. Basically, what happens is you have to change the RC time constant also. So, what you need is basically you will end up using a PMOS in triode region and you will change the bias current. You have to change both, so that the product is constant, so that you have some swing right. Otherwise, if you make r small, the swing becomes very small, it may not even oscillate if the gain becomes small ok. So, that is the way to tune this ok. Yeah, you have you can have a current mirror and then have a control current right that is possible ok.
Now, uh, <coughs> there is another way to make uh, differential oscillators that is first of all, if I take two inverters right and apply V i p and V i m, I will get V o m and V o p. Is this correct? I can take two identical single ended circuits and apply opposite phase inputs, the output will also be in opposite phase. Okay. This is many times used and this is known as pseudo differential structure. Okay. So, can we take the pseudo differential structure and then make a differential oscillator out of this? Is that possible? So, let us say we do this make a three stage oscillator. and we connect it like that and connect it like that. Will this be a differential oscillator? Will this be a differential oscillator or not? Actually, there is no relation between the two at all right. There is no telling if it starts up uh, first of all I mean even ignoring mismatch let us say they do oscillate at exactly the same frequency even then there is no uh, fixed phase relationship between these two. Okay. So, this of course, cannot be used at all. So, what you have to do is to you have to add circuits to force these waveforms to be opposite phase and that is done by adding inverters like this. If you have this then this and that have to be in opposite phase right. So, And once you do this, you could also possibly make uh, uh, an oscillator with even number of stages. Okay. This is something like I won't go into the details, but this is something like I mean, if you have a pseudo differential structure, you know the definition of common mode rejection ratio, right? Or common mode gain. What is common mode rejection ratio of a differential circuit? Uh, differential gain divided by a common mode gain. Okay. What is the common mode the rejection ratio of a pseudo differential structure? <coughs> it is 1 right, because the common mode gain is the same as differential gain, it does not differentiate between the two. If V i p and V i m happen to be in the same phase and the same magnitude, V o p and V i m will also be in the same phase and same magnitude. Okay. So, this has no way of telling whether the input is actually fully differential, the two circuits are obviously separated. So, this uh, structure, uh, these two inverters, uh, this latch like structure, right, this can be thought of as providing common mode rejection, okay, common mode rejection to this. Okay. So, again in analog AC design, you would have seen that one of the ways of uh, thinking about common mode feedback is you have a differential pair and you have some load what does the common mode feedback do? It will make the common mode impedance of the load very low and the differential impedance of the load very high. So, that the differential gain becomes high g m times differential impedance and the common mode gain becomes very low. So, the same thing here. Okay. So, if you have a structure like this, okay. If you try to raise both these voltages by equal amounts, it draws a lot of current. So, it corresponds to a small impedance, but if you try to raise this and lower that, what happens is that basically uh, this will draw a small current from here. Okay. So, then uh, it becomes a higher differential mode impedance. So, this provides common mode rejection. Okay. 
and it forces oscillations in differential mode okay and this now uh, this is again like regular inverter based stuff you can either have voltage controlled inverters meaning inverters controlled by its supply voltage or current served inverters either one can be done okay now basically because of limited supply these days right you will uh, i mean these inverter based structures are uh, preferred okay now let's say you have a ring oscillator controlled by its supply voltage something like this and the output of this has to drive whatever let us say the phase detector the flip flops in the phase detector. What problem do you foresee as you control the ring oscillator frequency? The oscillation amplitude is the same as the supply voltage right. So, as you lower the frequency the oscillation amplitude also reduces. So, this is a problem ok. So, typically you need a buffer after this. So, if I call this V control, uh, so let me call that as so the swing here will be from 0 to V control, and you need a buffer. some kind of uh, buffer which will make it go from 0 to V d d. Basically, the swing should be independent of frequency, so that uh, everything can be clocked properly. Okay. Is this fine? So, that is a very quick uh, treatment of ring oscillators. Uh, again lot of this is optimized by simulations and so on and there are some uh, enhanced versions of ring oscillators, but I would not go into that the vanilla versions work uh, quite well. Okay. So, now of course, there may be some optimization in uh, phase noise and other things to be done. Okay. Those things can be uh, uh, done by simulation. Okay. Now, there is one more problem if you use this uh, voltage controlled ring oscillator in a CDR loop. Okay. Where do we get the V control from? So, we have a, a charge pump. Okay. This is the control voltage, right. Now, will this work fine? What is the issue? Huh? Yeah, we need basically this thing is drawing the current, the current consumed by the ring oscillator is coming from the control port. Now, if you draw current from this, this does not behave anything like the charge pump that we thought, right. This uh, ICP here has to flow into the series RC. Okay. Now, first of all, this will completely short it almost. So, in this case, basically, we will need an LDO. I will show it as a uh, LDO meaning uh, low dropout regulator. I will show it as a uh, like buffer, some buffer like this, right. Here, <coughs> uh, the DC especially should be 0. If it has some capacitance, that is ok, that will correspond to the parasitic capacitance. So, that the current drawn by the oscillator is supplied by the buffer, ok. You cannot supply it from the charge pump, then even I mean it will just not be functional also. So, that is uh, part of it. So, that also I mean means that any noise from this right that will also affect the phase noise of the V C O okay? because 
first of all in general you have the control port of the VCO what is the control port doing if you change its voltage the frequency will change. So, if you have noise on that control port the noise will also change the frequency that will cause phase noise. Okay. So, that is why if you have a very high K VCO that means that a small change in the control voltage gives you a large change in frequency this is also a very risky thing as far as noise is concerned because any noise that is coupling into that right besides this is besides the inherent phase noise of the oscillator if you drive the uh, control port with a very clean I mean zero noise voltage source it may give you very good phase noise, but because K V C O is very high a small amount of noise on the control port can give you a large amount of phase noise. Okay. So, in general I mean, but this is a, a sort of universal problem if you have a high gain system high gain by definition means very high sensitivity to the input right a small change in the input can cause a large change in the output that is the definition of high gain. It will also be sensitive to all the junk that can go on at the input right it will be more sensitive to noise and so on. Now, just for completeness if you have a current control oscillator although it is called current control you can either <coughs> I mean you can change this current and what you can do for instance is this current itself comes from let us say a PMOS current source whose gate voltage is changed because the gate does not draw any DC the charge pump loop filter can drive this node okay. and also many times what you do is you do not want this current to become 0 what happens is then the oscillations will cease right. Once the oscillation ceases there is no phase detection nothing it can get locked up in that state. So, to ensure a minimum moment of current you will have a fixed current here. So, that it will be oscillating at some minimum frequency even if it is not the right frequency. Okay. This kind of thing can happen in uh, many cases I think you know that in band gap circuits you need start up and so on. So, there are many circuits which can get stuck in a 0 state right clearly an oscillator if it is not oscillating the phase detector does not work the phase detector does not work it does not give any output it is not going to change the oscillator in any way. Okay. So, everything can get stuck with 0, but typically you somehow make sure that uh, that does not happen. Similarly, the same thing can happen even with the voltage controlled oscillator. If for some reason this voltage is 0 right uh, this oscillator does not work at all then nothing is working these up and down switches do not operate nothing happens okay. it could get stuck there. Any questions about any of these things? So, we will look at uh, fundamental uh, sort of limits on uh, phase noise of uh, ring oscillators in the next class and also look at LC oscillators. Okay.